Hello, my name's Tom Cartill. It's Friday, the 4th of October, 2019. Um, it's getting a little bit late and it looks like it might rain, but um, inside the lighting is not very good. <clears throat> the purpose of this video is to either in full or in part explain about why Graham McNeil who is the head of Asia Pacific for FTI Consulting is totally incompetent and not fit for purpose, right? And this is due to my interactions with him recently, okay? So, I was initially contacted at their behest by an agent on the 13th of August, 2019 right now just to make things clear today it's the 4th of October 2019 and um, so and the last I heard from them was um, <clears throat> a few days ago now I've written a email a few emails to them explaining to them that due to their incompetent, illegal, and possibly criminal behavior, um, they broke the contract that we'd signed, the agreement that we'd signed. We'd countersigned it, and they'd accepted it, and he'd accepted it, and he specifically put in writing that he'd accepted it. So <clears throat> they basically decided they were going to change their mind and they could rescind it. Now, to be clear, this contract was signed under Korean law. And that's not back to back, but it was FTI or a consultancy. And FTI, I didn't know about them, but they're a very massive consultancy. So in Asia Pacific, this eight, um, Graham McNeil is in charge of 7,000 consultants. And these aren't people digging holes in the ground. These are things like accountants, engineers, quantity surveyors, contract managers, that type of thing. So anyway... <clears throat> This is under Korean law. Now, if you know anything about Korean law, um, they're very, very keen on privacy. Um, Korean labor law is very strict because in Korea, you have debtors prisons. If you can't pay a debt, you go to prison. So if someone starts defaming you over something that you allegedly did at work that you didn't do, and then you can't get a job, you could go to prison. Do you see what I mean? So it's a criminal defamation country. If you defame someone, it's a crime. It's not merely illegal. But of course, it's inherently illegal under any Korean law contract, yeah? So I was going to be employed as a Korean employee. So I'd be getting paid via, I believe, yeah, via, but it was a Korean law contract, okay? And I'll deal with this in more detail in another video probably because I don't want to get sidetracked. Anyway, so on the 13th of August, 19. <clears throat> um, I got um, a call from a recruitment agent or an email, I forget, but I've definitely got an email on that date saying there's an immediate start in either a place in Indonesia near Jakarta or in Seoul. But the thing is, both jobs pay the same. But I believe this is the thing. It's a bit confusing because there they've said that you'll, the first month's pay, will, you know, you'll also get accommodation. But you see, if it's only for a six-month contract, you can't really get accommodation in Korea for five months. Do you, do you see? It doesn't really make any sense. But of course, if I had have paid for accommodation, then they cancelled the contract, which they're not allowed to do. I would have lost a lot of money, wouldn't I? So this is this, this is also another reason why it's so severe. So anyway, so you could go to Seoul in Korea, one of the most expensive places to live on earth, and it's very difficult to get reasonable, reasonable accommodation that's not very expensive, as you probably know. Right? Now, so, the next time I heard from them, and, and, and I apologise, I, I was speaking to them via um, WhatsApp, and then Skype, and also on email. So there's, there's a, it's, it's slightly confused. I, I apologize in advance if I get this confused because I, I will probably forget things, but I've written it down in a kind of chronolo chronology. Right, so I was told to send documents 
right? Documents so that I'd be able to start. So, you know, things like passport, things like this, just qualifications, all that type of stuff. Right now, <clears throat> they said to me, upon this first, 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 or maybe it was a second conversation the next day, that, um, or something like that, that they at FTI Consulting wanted me to receive documents because their client, which is L O T T E E and C, which is Lot Engineering Consultant, Engineering and uh, Contracting or en Construction and Engineering, will be um, <coughs> wanting me to start doing the work before getting the visa to Indonesia. At this at this point. It became, it became clear that any idea of getting a job in, uh, well, you know, I, I expressed my, career, my preference for Indonesia. So it became clear that there was no question of um, Seoul. So they, they weren't saying, oh, well, maybe we'll send you to Seoul. Would that still be okay? That gone out the window. But they were saying, can we send you the documents? Because it takes a little bit of time to get a work visa in Indonesia. Now, this is an, another important point. Indonesia has employment visas and business visas. A business visa is a visa that you can get with like any sponsor. You just get a sponsor, uh, like a piece of paper saying uh, we we want you know we're, we're sponsoring it. And this is the same with certain types of uh, residency visas. And I know this for a fact because when I was talking in detail about it a little bit after the time we're talking, I was in. Uh, Penang and in Penang they're um, <coughs> in Penang they have an Indonesian embassy and there was a man there who gets visas in Indonesia for people and he's got like sponsors and all that but occasionally you still need to go out of the country and apply again and in Penang is a good place to do it and he was saying it's a very good place but that's just incidental so anyway but you see the thing is that so you've got a business visa which I could have just got myself I could have literally walked to that embassy and got it myself just from phoning somebody or emailing someone and giving them like $10 and then they would send me an email sponsoring me uh, and I could have gone there on a business visa myself because you're not allowed to work on a business visa but you're allowed to go on a business trip. I think it's up to six months you can stay there but you, it's, it's, to, it's to explore business opportunities. It's definitely not working and if you work, you'll be, you know, there'll be big trouble. It's, it's not allowed there. They're very strict about it. And then you have a working visa. But you see, they were talking about a working visa here, right? Okay. Yeah, so they're saying at this point it's a six-month contract. Um, I asked the agent how much the money would be, and he said 13,000 um, 13, US dollars a month, right? Uh, but he said that, you know, you'd have a place to stay and you'd also have your food paid for, I think your breakfast or something. I'm not I'm not sure. I said, but just, I'm not, these things often change, but that was the, the idea. Right, so, yeah, so I heard on the 16th of the 8th, that's three days later, that, yeah, it'll be six months and it's in Indonesia and Jakarta and they want to send me details, send all my details and then as soon, then as, soon as they do this, they'll send me the, contra the, the, bit, the things to do with the contract from a lot, they'll send these through to me. Right, so that I can start doing them before I get this visa. But a business visa isn't difficult to get, yeah. So that's long, you know. So they could have actually got me a business visa, or I could have got myself a business visa. That's not a problem. So this is this is incorrect information. But they don't know that I know this is incorrect information. So they were misleading me on this point. Now, they said, oh, the agent asked me on the 30th of the 8th, so this is like more than 15 days later, because it was on the 13th they first contacted me, this is the 30th, confirm Indonesian start date, just to make sure I can still go, when can I go? Right, and I said immediate on the 31st. Agent, is this week okay on the 1st of the 9th, so on the 1st of September? And I'm on the second day, of course, <clears throat> on the 2nd of September. They said, okay, send your passport. I sent it. Uh, right now, on the 6th of September, so that's basically a week after. It's, you know, So they have, have no intention of taking you on that week. <clears throat> and remember to start off with, it was an immediate start. right? And this is almost a month later. 
right? So, um, I mentioned to them, I'm running out of money. Um, you know, uh, is this starting or do I just forget it? Um, uh, so that's on the 10th of September. On the 11th, Mr. Peon, P-Y-E-O-N, he says, needs my, no, no need for any documents. I just need my passport. They've already, they've already decided I'm the one. And the, the, it's been client approved, yeah? So that's with lot E and C. And they're in FTI, Mr. Peon's FTI, and lot E and C employ them to supply me. So he says, no need for any documents or anything like that. You phone me on Skype, right? And that's on the 11th of September, September 11th. So at that point, I remember actually thinking September 11th, it's a memorable date, isn't it? Well, that looks like we're, we're, we're there, yeah? Almost an entire month after the 13th of the 8th, on the 11th of the 9th, that is. Now, um, this Mr. Peon writes again and he says, what's your nationality and what's your location for a work visa application, right? And that's on the 16th of the 9th. <clears throat> so this is five days after the previous message from him. These are only the significant messages. There's other messages in between just asking questions and, you know, there's nothing of significance on them. But, well, at least I don't think there is any. I probably missed something. Right. A lot are pro processing your working visa. This is Mr. P on saying this on the 20th of the 9th, 20th of September. Right. Right. Now, then he says... Um, on the 23rd of September, please find draft CC me and secondment via lot. So he's, send, he's sending me, right? At this point, we realize, I think actually we realized before, actually, I think they actually said before, but it's only just now they officially admit that they actually didn't have any job. So they were just telling me there was an immediate start, saying they needed to send me documentation, saying they were applying for a work visa now, and they weren't, they weren't doing any of that stuff. You see, when none of that was happening. Um, because the secondment um, via lot, the secondment agreement with ENC, lot ENC, to FTI, had been received. But it, it turns out it's only a draft, right? <clears throat> then the next thing, we will get the letter of acceptance tomorrow. Bus visa. Business visa first for a kickoff meeting, right? So they're changing it. It's not a work visa anymore. It's going back to a business visa. But a business visa you can get any time. Yeah, it's very easy. You can get it in the day. I could get it in the day, in the morning, and actually go to Indonesia because <coughs> I was in Malaysia. I could have just gone. I could have just gone right then. Right. Right now. So anyway, I've sent back to him. Maybe you can explain this tomorrow. And sorry, that's when he said, you know, Business business visa for work visa. Right, okay. Right, so now they've changed the... Sorry, no. So I've got an offer on the 26th of the 9th, 26th September, from somebody called Ditty, Ditty Wong. And Ditty Wong's is human resources, right? So this is the actual offer, right? Um, this Mr. Peon has said five months will send lot contract soon. No, so that's the 27th, yeah. Right, so the, the offer came on the 26th and they're saying f we'll send contract soon. So I, I don't really understand that, but anyway. So anyway, so the offer came through. Contract Mr. Young to get FDI email set up for you, right? So this is the same day, this is on the 26th or 27th, I forget, anyway. 26th or 27th of September. Right now, look. Right, uh, so I signed it, I sent it back. Um, right, now, Graham McNeil is the boss of FTI in Asia Pacific, right? So, I've he's been copied in on these emails and stuff, right? And some of them were to do with him, like the secondment from Lot, that agreement that came through about two or three days before. Um, <clears throat> Right, so I've sent, saved it and sent it back right now. Right, so I've asked this Mr. Peon after Graham, the boss, has said, welcome aboard. This is via LinkedIn messages because I couldn't get his email. I, my, I sent him an email and it bounced. 
So, well, I sent him and other people an email and it bounced. So I, it was just contacting him via LinkedIn. And um, so I've asked this Mr. Peon, right, so when's this, when's this documentation coming that you've been saying is urgent and needs to be there yesterday as of um, like six weeks ago? And he said, oh, soon. And I said, soon in, in a few hours, because this is the weekend. No, this, this was um, Friday, right? And he says, no, it's um, soon in the next few days. So he's just he, he's just kicking the ball down the road again. Right, then I get this message from the human resources people saying, right, um, can you fill in this, um, te- you need to do this test to qualify. Now, this is after I've been told that the, the deal is done. And they're saying, can you do this like test? And it's saying it all involves things like proving all of the places you've worked at and giving your exact location address for the last five years. Now, you've got to understand that I work abroad and sometimes I work in a camp in a desert. And sometimes those camps, you can't even find out what they're called because it's just like a desert camp. You see what I mean? It's just in a desert. And it might get knocked down. Sometimes I don't even have like names that you'd be able to find. And sometimes the people will the camp won't be there after the project. They take the camp down and dismantle it and take it away, or bury it in the ground or something. So the, there's no way I'm going to do this because I'm not going to go and do a test after I've been accepted. After six weeks of them fucking around, after them causing problems for six weeks, I'm not going to do a test after I've signed the agreement that says. Oh, you, you know, you've got to pass the test because I can't necessarily, I don't want to put myself in a position of being like accepting it and then failing it. And they go, oh, you failed it <laughs> because I don't know what the answers are. Because like when I've been in England, I've lived in but my brother's house. I've lived in my mom and dad's house. I've lived around my friend's house. Yeah. In between jobs. I've also lived in Thailand. I've lived in um, Malaysia. I've stayed in, I've stayed in other, and I've stayed in like, other countries, Af- including Africa, the Middle East, there's, there's, it's it's Australia. Do you know what I mean? It's very, very difficult for me to know exactly when I was at which place when. It, it's, it's really, really very difficult. And I, I, I literally don't want to waste a day trying to work it out because it, I'll get it wrong anyway, I'm sure. But it's it's not it's not reasonable, these ridiculous, asinine questions. So I've written back to this Mr. Peon. I've not written to the HR ladies, uh, Ditty. Ditty Wong, I've said, do I have to answer this? You know, you've said I've got the job. You know, you're meant to be sending the contract documents. You haven't done it. You haven't given me exact start date. You're meant to have given me a work visa. Now you've changed it to an employ- uh, uh, business visa. But I know for a fact that you can just get a business visa. I can walk down the street, get one, and I can be on the aeroplane tomorrow. So all of this idea that Oh, you've got to wait for the other cut firm. Lot is all lies. That's 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 completely inaccurate. Right. So then <clears throat> it seems that at some stage they've got umbrage at this, right? Now, so the agent called me. Now, you've got to remember the agent isn't privy to the agreement. This is a mere finder. He finds people. So of course, I'm not going to not tell him if I'm working for them. But at the same time, he's not privy to the contract. And this is Korean law, like I've said. And you can't go around talking to people about your contract. It's completely illegal, right? It's illegal and it's against the contract. And it might even be a crime. Because like I said, in Korea, you can go to debtor's prison and you have criminal defamation. So if you're saying, oh, we did this, we did that, we did the other. You don't go and tell someone else to tell them who's not privy to the contract. It's completely illegal, right? It probably is criminal. Uh, I'm not totally sure, but it's definitely against the contract. And it would also repudiate their service agreement to supply people like me with lot E and C. Because, of course, if you do something illegal relating to the contract, it repudiates any agreement with that contract, if they should find out. Now, if we do a bit of algebra here, they're not going to have said to lot, right, yeah, we've got someone, oh, no, some retard, in human resources started asking stupid questions that have nothing to do with the contract after the event of signing it and us telling you that he's on the way. So if we do a bit of algebra here, we can be pretty sure 
that they will have been lying to this lot, lot ENC, which is another Korean firm. Remember, it's a Korean, it's a Korean contract <coughs> with the FTI Korea, I believe. FTI Korea, I, I can, I'll clarify it later, but lot is a, a Korean firm, yeah? But of course, it would be an Indonesian subsidiary. So they will have obviously said bad things about me. And to the agent, they will have said bad things about me, yeah? And they're not even meant to be talking to either of those parties about me. Yeah, just do, do you understand? It's completely illegal and totally stupid. And there's no way they can just terminate contracts that have been signed. Right, so they will have been defaming me, which will be criminal defamation under Korean law. Because otherwise, they're not going to say, we were asking asinine questions. He got sick of us and asked us, what more? What, what are you playing at? What? I'm not answering any more stupid questions. Right, so... So the agent called on the 28th of September, right? Then, um, later on that day, so I immediately, this was a Saturday, so the 27th was Friday. That was when it all got signed off and it was like, welcome aboard, well done, blah, blah, blah. You know, <clears throat> the same day I asked for the contract details, as in the contract that I'd be working on, because it's contract management role. I might not remember to say that. Uh, and um, he said, you know, kicking it down the road again. Oh, soon, you know, being vague. Oh, maybe next week, sort of, maybe in the next few days. Not the next, not now. But you know what I mean? They haven't got it now. But they said they had it. How far back? Six weeks ago. More lies. Do you see what I mean? Because they never even had this contract for like almost six weeks, maybe five and a half weeks. Then they eventually get it. They leave it a few days before they sign it. And then they give it to me. But all the time they've been stringing me along and lying, yeah? Right. So, I, I write to this Graham McNeil on the weekend. And I'll give you the details of exactly what I said to Graham um, very, very shortly. Okay? Thank you for listening.